Hey, what's up everyone? Lex here. And, uh, you know, 25 years ago, a game kind of was born into the world and, you know, had a funny name and, and uh, it was a sports game. So what, right? Well, 25 years later, Madden NFL football has become a behemoth. Um, it certainly has a lot of history involved and maybe one day I'll get into all that history but for right now I just wanted to kind of reflect on my experience with uh, Madden NFL football now to a lot of you Madden is just kind of that that game that you know comes out every year as a roster update or you know it'll be a dollar in three years or whatever but to me what Madden represents is nothing but memories um, I started playing Madden NFL football probably around 1995. Um, you know, Madden wasn't the only football game I played, but I think the first game of uh, Madden football that really clicked with me was Madden 96. Uh, I remember renting Madden 96 so many times that the uh, video store actually showed me my history in the computer of how many times I rented it and it was pretty much to the point where it would have been more cost efficient to actually buy the game. Um, yeah, what I loved about Madden 96 was that you could create your own player and I was I was huge into you know getting into the whole uh, character creation and and I've always been into you know Legos and stuff like this things that are creative Mi Minecraft obviously but, um, you know, it all started with Madden 96, and you could create your own player. But the cool thing about it was you just didn't go into a menu and assign, you know, attribute points. You actually did, like, a, a skills test. So, um, you know, one of the skills tests was you have to do exactly what the coach tells you to do. So you have to push the, uh, the D-pad up, down, left, left, right, you know, that kind of thing. And that would um, increase your awareness or, or something like that. It's been a while since I've played it, but... You know, I still remember doing all those tests and just creating players just to do the test. It was awesome. And, uh, you know, Madden, Madden and I kind of took a break for a while. Um, I played uh, a lot of game day, and, and uh, <laughs> game day was, was cool to me because you could uh, practice with your team, and they would show up in their practice shorts and stuff like that. Um, you know, some people didn't like gameplay because, or game day because the gameplay was was basically like players skating around on ice, and uh, you know it was a bit of an acquired taste. But for a while, game day actually uh, was threatening Madden, and that was around the same time that I was actually preferring game day to Madden. Uh, but I jumped back on the bandwagon of Madden probably around Madden 2001. Now Madden 2001, um, I played for the PlayStation One. It was out for the PS2. It was uh, you know the first. Madden on a next gen system at next gen at the time. Here we are almost getting ready for the PS4 and uh, Xbox One. But you know, Madden 2001 was uh, to me just a game I poured hours and hours and hours into. You know, creating players and creating teams, even you could create your own team. And I remember at the time I was obsessed with a movie called The Replacements. And in that, in that uh, movie, they have uh, a fictitious team called the Sentinels. And so I would create the Sentinels with Keanu Reeves and Jon Favreau. And, and uh, I had a lot of fun with it. And mainly just creating my player, taking him through a career. And they didn't really have a career mode. So essentially, you were just playing franchise mode with your player or whatever team he was on. And, uh, you know, again, it was a game I played over and over. But I didn't have next gen and I wanted next gen so bad and Mad 2001 had uh, on the PlayStation 1 had like a season preview for EA's next gen sports titles and um, you know obviously they showed FIFA and NBA Live and they showed Madden and I watched that thing over and over and over and over and over again I watched uh, just for the the Eddie George moment or the Emmett Smith moment and actually what's funny is to get my uh, parents to buy me a PS2, I would try to, you know, my dad was a, a big Dallas Cowboys fan, so i try to get him in there and show him, look, it's Emma Smith and all his next-gen glory, you know. Uh, I don't think that worked, but still, <laughs> it was pretty cool to see, and it just made me want it more and more. Uh, and then I finally got my PS2. Um, I still remember that day 
pretty well. I went over to uh, a town that, that had a Best Buy and Walmart and a mall and, and so uh, you know we were looking through the mall and we came across an FYE. A lot of people don't know what FYE is anymore because I think a lot of them are closed down but basically FYE is just an electronic store, entertainment store. And so uh, I was looking up on their racks and there's Madden and you could actually take a look at them. So I was looking at the back and what blew my mind, I kid you not, what blew my mind was the fact that you could create your own coach um, and also that all the coaches had models themselves. I, that, that blew my mind because the thing to me was so far the sidelines looked like a bunch of um, you know, just a, a bunch of random polygons, you know. It, it, but to see some actual models on the side, like the players, the coaches, and stuff like that, it just blew my mind. And that was honestly one of the main reasons I wanted it, besides the upgraded graphics. So I remember um, my parents said no, and I put it back, and uh, we went over to Best Buy. And again, the whole point was to get a PlayStation 2. And uh, so we grabbed the PS2 and I was like, well, I need a game to play. And so they allowed me to get one game and that one game was Madden 2002. Uh, Madden 2002, when I first popped it in, my eyes were bugging out of my head. It looked gorgeous compared to what we had seen before. And, um, you know, I, even on those tube TVs with the, you know, the rounded screen and everything, you know, kids don't know about these, this, uh, you know, they don't know about those kind of TVs this, these days, excuse me, but uh, you know, it, it looked beautiful and I remember just kind of showing off the graphics to anybody that would look. And uh, that's another game that I played for a long time and, and another game that I just created my own player and you know, did I went that route. That I, I went that route for quite some time and I remember when Madden 2003 was ready to come out I had a computer class. That uh, that was my only source of internet at the time. So I was looking at you know I was looking at the um, IGN previews for Madden 2003 and looking at how you could create your own players because that was what I was into. And uh, you know Madden 2003 was a game that I don't hate, but it it just certainly um, the, the improvements are very they're kind of the unsung hero of the series I think because it kind of moved the series from a more stiff animation to a more fluid animation and even though going back and playing it now it's really tough to play uh, I do respect Madden 2003 and what it did um, for us but we also got mini camp drills in Madden 2003 which was pretty cool back to the practice shorts and everything that we had with game day so I was sold with that but Madden 2004 that was a breakthrough year. And he, I even got out my, um, my retired Michael Vick Atlanta Falcons jersey just for this video for that reason. Michael Vick, of course, you know, the new jerseys were coming out. He's the cover guy. Uh, so much hype. I remember seeing stuff on ESPN about it. I remember seeing stuff on, uh, you know, just normal, normal channels that would never cover this. MTV and stuff like that. They were all talking about this game. And, uh, you know, with good reason, Michael Vick is a beast in this game. Uh, running the ball with him, you're almost unstoppable. And, in fact, you're almost unstoppable in all the other games that he's in, too. I mean, uh, up until a certain point, the guy had the best arm strength and, uh, you know, speed of a quarterback in the game. So, but what was really cool is what I heard about this new owner mode that was coming out. And owner mode sounded like everything that I wanted in a game. Because you could take the reins of an NFL franchise and you would have to worry about their financials. So you'd have to worry about selling merchandise and selling uh, concessions. And you'd have to worry about how you finished on the year and keeping up fan support. Um, it, to me, Madden 2004 it was just one of those games that that uh, I'll always remember for that mode that really just uh, revolutionized the series. And I still remember the day I picked this up too. I was with a, a friend and we were in Chico, which was the same place that I bought my PS2 and I bought uh, Madden 2002. And um, you know, I actually hitched a ride with him and his family to go pick up this game. 
And uh, I remember we, we wore our jerseys in. I think he had a Terrell Owens jersey. I had a, a Marvin Snoop Minnis jersey. Obscure reference for sure, but um, we went into the Best Buy, picked it up, and I remember we like stopped at Baskin Robbins before we went home, and I just tore into it, and I'm flipping through the manual, reading all about owner mode, and I'm like, oh my God, you can set the prices for the hot dogs and the barbecue beef sandwiches at, uh, in St. Louis, and this and that. Uh, really such a great mode that they uh, kind of threw in there. And man, 2004 got a lot of play from me, <laughs> but man, that, compa that didn't compare to Madden 2005 because what I did with Madden 2005 was something that uh, I'll even admit is insane and I still do it today. Madden 2005 came out, uh, it had a collector's edition. Uh, I remember I just picked up the regular game. It was the first game I picked up on Xbox and played then, but it was uh, revolutionary because of the hit stick that it implied. And the hit stick is, to this day, one of the most fun features in any sports game ever and in fact they've toned it down quite a bit which is unfortunate but man 2005 you were going in head hunting with that hit stick a hundred percent all the time uh, and you were whiffing on tackles so it had that risk ward uh, risk reward thing and man man 2005 it also changed the player models so the player models look bigger they didn't look as skinny as they did in man 2004 and uh, it, it, it brought in owner mode, but it improved it. You now had player morale and, and personalities. You could assign team captains, and, and that would factor into everything. Some people wouldn't sign with you because they didn't like, they didn't like the area in which your team was located. They didn't like the weather climate. So they wouldn't, you know, that would be a factor in signing with you. And these are things that I miss today. Uh, not only that, but it, in, it included a radio show. Tony Bruno radio show, which, I mean, these are the kinds of games that, you know, to this day, they, they still make waves. I mean, what came out alongside this was NFL 2K5, and people still talk about NFL 2K5 being the most revolutionary football game and the best football game of all time, um, you know, and I'm not here to debate that really, but I think both games were just on top of their game that year. And I don't think we've had quite a year like that as far as innovation goes. And uh, it's kind of sad to say it, but, but Madden 2005 is one of those last great, truly, truly great Madden titles. Um, I, what, what I did with this and what I, what I was saying about me being insane with Madden, 20, or Madden uh, 2005 was this was the first year I picked every single team in franchise mode to run and I would run all their operations. I'd run every single team's uh, reciting of their free agents, uh, the draft, uh, filling their depth charts up. I mean, all this. This is what I'm into now. And this is what got me started Madden 2005. You know, just playing every single game in an NFL season and it's, it's kind of like playing chess against yourself because you're trying to better every single team and, and it really kind of eliminates uh, the cheapness in the trade system. If you're playing a CPU and you know they're making trades all over the place and they're making trades that don't make sense maybe, maybe even just one trade that doesn't make sense, could kill it for you. I'm in control of all the trades that I do, so I can make sure that I think every single trade is fair, and then every single trade gets value out of it. So um, with Madden NFL 25, you know I probably played that for 200 hours plus uh, with playing every single game. I got through a season, and usually that's uh, quite a feat because it takes months and months and months to get through a season if you're playing every single game, but. That's kind of the trend that started with me, and I'll always remember Madden 2005 for that. Uh, Madden 2006, um, it introduced the Vision Cone, the QB Vision Cone, which, to be honest with you, I wasn't in for. I mean, I understand that uh, some people think it's it's kind of like the best sim feature that's ever been included in a Madden 25 tie or a Madden NFL title, excuse me. Um, that it's so realistic that you, I don't think so though because when you move with your eyes say you're a quarterback dropping back okay it takes me 
you know, a nanosecond to move my eyes to look. This would take you literally a second to move the cone, and if it's a cross field, it would take you a couple seconds to move the cone across the field. To me, it just wasn't realistic. Uh, I do see what they were going for. It just hit the mark, or it didn't hit the mark for me. Um, what they did introduce in Madden 2006 was the truck stick, though, which basically meant when you were running the football, if you flipped the right analog stick up, your player would kind of hunch over and run over the defender, whoever that may be. Uh, I love it. I love the truck stick. I love the hit stick. Uh, but sometimes it can be a little overpowering, especially if you had a big back like in, in 06. You know, maybe you talk about a TJ Duckett from that era. Uh, but I love going back and revisiting these titles to kind of use those rosters with those controls. And it really never gets old for me. Uh, but other than that, Madden 2006 introduced the uh, career mode. And the career mode, I was really looking forward to because at that time, that was like my most anticipated feature that they would put in Madden is that career mode. And uh, what it ended up being was actually pretty decent. Uh, what they would do was at the beginning, you would have your mother and your father and they would have different genes and, and a history of what they used to do. Mom was a tennis player, dad was a chemist, and so that would mix to kind of uh, make you a smart athlete type deal. And the problem with that is all the um, appearances were preset to those things. So what you ended up doing if you wanted to make yourself and make it somewhat realistic, you would just flick, uh, quickly flick through the, um, the different faces till you saw one that kind of matched yours and you would just go with whatever it said there. You know, and, and that's kind of realistic, too, because you don't really have a chance or a choice when you're being born of what your parents do or who they are. So, you know, that was okay. But actually going into the draft, having that calendar where you'd give interviews with Rich Eisen. Um, you know, you could go into the tattoo shop, get tattoos, change your hair. Um, you know, and all these are just basic edit features that are still kind of available today. Not the tattoos or anything like that. But they displayed it in a way that was kind of like, okay, you have to travel over here to do this. And you, you would have a map of the city and the, the stadium, the practice facility, and this and that. And you would just kind of go all over the map. You know, and this is when they kind of, to me, when they put that kind of care into a mode and that time into a mode. And it was just really cool. Um, but overall, it was kind of disappointing. It wasn't really... Uh, what I thought it was going to be and I don't I don't know if it's because of how it was or, You know how they made it or if it was just me realizing that maybe that wasn't exactly what I was looking forward to but more franchises my style uh, Now we're gonna get to my favorite Madden of all time uh, and A lot of people are gonna argue with me on this one for sure Madden 2005 Okay, I've heard the argument. I, I've argued it before but Madden 2007 on Xbox is my favorite Madden of all time and I emphasize the on Xbox okay not the 360 or the PS3 version but the Xbox version the reason why uh, this is my favorite game of all time it's to me it's like Madden 2005 put the truck stick inside polish everything the graphics were beautiful you know they're shine to the helmets Everything looked crisp, but not only that, the rosters were really changing at this time, and we were getting more hybrid players being drafted into the NFL and used in schemes. Uh, you look at guys like Reggie Bush, Deshaun Foster, um, you know, guys that had a lot of speed, and you could also team that up with maybe a bigger back and, and run a quick substitution offense. Not that you couldn't do that before, but... In Madden 07, it just felt like it really paid off to do so. Um, everything in this game is just amazing to me. From owner mode, it's it's 04 plus 05 with the radio show and just tune logic. And uh, again, a lot of it has to do with the rosters because you know it is quite similar to 05 and 06, but. Um, to me, this was kind of like the last time they really paid much attention to Madden on the older systems, on the PS2 and the Xbox, before they transitioned to Madden 08 and put all their focus on that. 
Uh, and you can really tell between the two as well because I think Madden 06 and 07 for Xbox 360 or uh, you know and PS3 for 07 just not very good games at all. Um, but with with 07 on Xbox, I, I mean I, I can still play this to this day. It's just a tight game of football to me. And not only that, but this introduced lead blocking, which I don't use very often, but a lot of people are fond of, which means you could take control of your fullback before the, uh, the snap, and then once the snap would happen, you could run and, and make your own blocks. And then once you make that block, you switch over back to the running back and finish it out. So Madden 07 is, you know, I don't know if I want to say by far my favorite, but it is my favorite. And then probably 05 would be right there close behind. Now we go up to the uh, next-gen systems, and that's when I really started getting into next-gen. My first game I bought was for, for my Xbox 360 was NCAA Football 08. And uh, so Madden 08 had to come along with it. And, um, you know, Madden 08, Vince Young on the cover. This was kind of a surprise when Vince Young was on the cover because uh, they were trying to get Ladanian Tomlinson, and something fell through there. But uh, Vince Young was a last-minute call-on. A lot of people did, thought he didn't deserve it. But, um, you know, he was actually a pretty good player to use in Madden 08. Madden 08, uh, you know, it still had for the announcers, it still had um, the radio personality that they debuted on Next Gen. And so that was, you know, that's one of those things that most people hate, but I, I was okay with. But, I mean, other than that, it was just a, basically a next-gen experience from the graphics. It was similar to Madden 2002 when I played it. You know, it looked great, looked phenomenal, but at the same time, the, the game modes, they weren't that rich with anything. You didn't get the owner mode you got in Madden 07 with the Xbox. Um, you know, but as far as graphically, it was gorgeous. And I'd, say, I'd even say that it probably looks better than the games they're making today. Uh, next up, Madden 09. They released a 20th anniversary edition for Madden 09, which also included Head Coach 09. So I'll be talking a bit about Head Coach as well as 09. Now, for people that know me and know my taste in Madden, they'll know that 09 is probably it's 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 my least favorite or second least favorite game. It's between that and 11. And what I just hated about 09 was that. Uh, it looked it looked amazing, but the gameplay was just too fast. Uh, the defenders, uh, it almost it was almost like as soon as you threw the ball, they had some sort of superpower where it was like, okay, run and go intercept that now. And I'm not you know trying to make excuses for myself. I'm not the bat, uh, the best Madden player. I'm going to throw interceptions, but to me, it just felt really cheap in there. They had a skills trainer, which kind of uh, gave you a virtual reality test on the screen and, and you would go and you would run through these drills and you basically set your difficulty to that but I thought that didn't work very well I was getting uneven games using that um, it, it looked again it looked great it looked phenomenal in fact I enjoyed the first couple games I played um, on Madden 09 but after a while it, it just the crack started showing they got a new announced team with um, Chris Collinsworth and Tom Hammond and I, I like that team quite a bit. Tom Hammond, I'm not a huge fan of, but I, I like Collinsworth, especially in video games. He kind of brings a realistic, natural feel to it. Uh, but 09, jeez, man. Uh, I got I got the collector's edition and everything, but uh, I glad, I'm glad I did because it did come with some bonuses that made me feel at least okay about buying the game. Um, and one of those bonuses was Head Coach 09. The Head Coach 09 was developed by um, Josh Lumen who does the franchise, the Connected Careers. He's the head of that. He's basically, um, from what I understand, on the development team, he's pretty much the head developer, or the lead developer. And um, Head Coach 09 is one of those games where it's not for everybody. It's, it's not. It's slow. Uh, you don't actually play on the field. Uh, it's, you, you watch. You're a coach, and so you're coaching everything that happens on the field. Um, it had a very interesting setup with the NFL draft and with scouting, and I was I was digging all that stuff. But where it falls short is that simulation engine. It's using Madden 08, basically. It looks like Madden 08, but uh, a scaled down version of Madden 08 on Xbox 360. 
And uh, to me, it just wasn't very fun to watch. You know, it, 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 it more, it was frustrating, I think. I do like to play the games, but this has, this game has a lot to offer if you can pick it up for cheap because it, it, um, it kind of sheds some light on some stuff we don't usually get in franchise mode, restrictive free agents and, and uh, contract negotiations. Like, you know, to me, it's a, a good game, but at the same time, it's not a game that I want to pop in you know, every month or so and play, which is unfortunate. Uh, I, I do think they could do a better job with it, but now I wish they would just, I hope they don't go back to head coach. I did like, actually, you know what? I like the first head coach better than this one. Um, and I thought the first head coach was brilliant, but uh, this one to me is kind of a miss. So Madden 2010, now we're getting closer to where we are now. And Madden 2010 was a game I played a lot of. Because it was to me, it was a step up from Madden 09, and that is an understatement. It was a huge step up from 09 because what you got was a different pace. They actually slowed the game down, and there was you could you could actually set it to different uh, speeds if you wanted. So you can do fast pace like 09, but slowing the game down helped it so much. It's hard to kind of uh, do it justice just by speaking about it. You really have to play it, play 09, and then play 10, and you'll see. Now on to uh, Madden 11, and uh, God, what a disappointment that was. Uh, Madden 11 was a game that, with with Madden 10 being a, so good, I thought it could only get better from there. And then they introduced this Madden 11 moniker of quicker, simpler, deeper, and. Uh, most of the times when they mean simpler, it's going to be for the more casual people who aren't into it and they're trying to sell more copies of Madden. And, and you know, I understand it, but they introduced Game Flow basically. And Game Flow is something that I'm not a fan of. Um, don't get me wrong, I don't, I don't like to, you know, go out and pick every single play and, you know, kind of have a, a system or whatever. But I, I mean, I use Ask Coach so that I can get three or more plays to choose from and then I can kind of figure out, okay, well, let's run here or let's pass here and what kind of run, what kind of pass, you know, and just narrow it down and keep the game going quickly. Game flow does keep the game going, but it picks your next play, your next play, your next play. You don't really have much control over it. You can say, no, I don't like that play and pick another play from the full, um, from the full playbook, but the problem with that is it's, it just seems like a disruptive flow and if you're using game flow, or game flow, the whole point of it is to get through the game quickly. They were just trying to cut down on gameplay time for the more casual people there. And uh, they also added Gus Johnson uh, for play-by-play, -play, which, uh, no, Gus, not in video games. Uh, not Well, you'd think he would be perfect for video games because he has that enthusiasm, but Inflection was all over the place. You know, he's trying to do play by play, and he's shouting one guy's name, Troy Palamalu, and does this whole, you know, uh, made the tackle on that play. It just it didn't work. They it, it didn't string together well. I thought Collinsworth was still good, um, but Gus Johnson didn't work for me. So that was unfortunate. But yeah, uh, Madden Eleven was also to me too easy. It. Uh, it was so easy to score in that game. I think my first regular season game I played was the Vikings and the Saints, and the total score was like 77 to 70 in, in the normal quarters that I play and everything. And it was just, at that point, I knew, I was like, okay, this isn't going to be good. Played a few more games, uh, didn't like it. So, unfortunately, it's between this and Madden 09, my least favorite Maddens of all time. Um, and also, they didn't even change franchise mode from 10. It was the exact same franchise mode. And the, the what they said was the reason they did that was because uh, they were focusing on the whole making it simpler, quicker, deeper, blah, blah, blah. So Madden 12 got back on track. And, uh, you know, this is one of my favorites. It's probably like my third favorite Madden of all time. Uh, the character models are beautiful, much better than... This, you know, actually 08 was pretty good too, but uh, the models in this were great. Uh, gameplay was fantastic. 
you know, this is where we kind of got a shift in um, the regime with Madden 12. It was it was switching at that point. You know, now Michael Young is on board as the creative director, and uh, he was he's also in charge of uniforms and stuff like that. And he's a photographer, so he takes that. He, you know, he takes details seriously, and uh, you could just tell on this. You know, not to say that every single uniform was great or whatever, but uh, to me, just fantastic game. But there's one big flaw for me in this game. When you are playing franchise mode, and they did do a little bit to fr uh, franchise mode, not a lot, but they added 75-man uh, rosters, and you cut them down to 53 before the start of the season, which I loved. The problem is there's a bad substitution system in the preseason that subs in punters for kickers and plays uh, number one wideouts at DB towards the end of the games. And um, Also, what's bad about this is that it, not even if it's just importing draft classes from NCAA, if you are, um, if you're going to just use any rookies at all, even from the in-game rookies, some of them come in with like bulging shoulder pads that you can't fix. It's a glitch. And like the polygons stick out way there, it just looks so ugly. You got quarterbacks looking like linebackers and stuff like that. And, um, it's it's an it sounds like a very small flaw, like a cosmetic thing, but to me it just ruins the game um, because from that point forward, everybody's gonna look all weird, and uh, it it doesn't look as beautiful as the regular models in the game. So, uh, but Madden 12, I played a lot of until that glitch. And when I hit that glitch, I was steaming. I'll tell you what, I probably even sent a tweet to, to Josh Lumen saying, you guys not test for this stuff and everything like that. I got over it now, but I mean, uh, at that time it was pretty heartbreaking. So, uh, Madden 13. Madden 13 is a love hate relationship with me. And, uh, you know, when I first played the game, I first played the demo. I was actually not going to buy Madden for the first time since Madden 2001. I was not going to buy Madden 13 because they took out uh, 32 team control, which I had been doing since Madden 2005, and I was pissed. And uh, what ended up happening was uh, I played the demo and I was sold on the gameplay. The gameplay was just so fresh, it was new. The Infinity Engine felt great. Um, even, even if it was a little glitchy. It, it felt so good that I could look past the weird flopping players and people tripping over each other. Um, you know, the gameplay was smooth. The catch animations were the best in a while in this series. And uh, they added um, Jim Nance and Phil Sims on commentary. And you see them up in the booth before the game. And Madden 13 is a good game. It really is. But it does have its flaws. It doesn't have the 32-team uh, control, which really hurts me because I tried the whole online franchise deal, and people lose interest after a while, after like the first season or so, and it's hard to find that group of people that are going to play through it. And so you're just basically playing one team alone on offline franchise or whatever. Uh, to me, it, it, did, it did miss. Luckily, though, for Madden 25, they are bringing back 32-team control, and they're also bringing back the ability to import draft classes. I cannot wait. We are a week away from Madden NFL 25, you know, the, the whole release date. Or, excuse me, NCAA 14 is a, a fantastic game. Uh, probably my favorite NCAA football game of all time. It's a really good game, so if you haven't tried that, try it and go pick it up. Uh, but Madden 25, I'm hoping for the best. Uh, I, I finally get my way to play back, which is uh, most excellent. Uh, I've been playing the old ones just to get prepped for it. So Madden 25 is going to be a big game, but not only that, it marks 25 years of Madden. I'm 25 years old. You know, 25 is the number. And uh, to be honest with you, it's, it's really cool to be raised on football. Not only football, because my family was a, a football family but being raised on Madden NFL football. You know, say what you will about Madden and EA. And, um, you know, I might agree with you on a few things, but as far as the memories that Madden has given me, it's fantastic. And uh, hopefully you have a good Madden holiday too. I'll be playing the game, reviewing the game for rantemradio.com, so make sure you check that out. Um, 
And I'll also be doing my own franchise, and I'll bring up a website and everything. You can check that out at facebook.com slash lexvs. And, uh, yeah, that, that about does it for my Madden memories. So, uh, you know, next time you're at a flea market or whatever and you see Madden 95 laying there and it's a dollar and you say that's way too much, just remember, it's not a piece of junk because uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I definitely have fond memories of Madden NFL. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like. Until next time, I'm Lex. See you later.